The Thief, His Wife and the Canoe is an ITV television drama series that was first broadcast on the 17th of April 2022. Written by Chris Lang and directed by Richard Langston, the program dramatizes the John Darwin disappearance case where prison officer and teacher John Darwin hoaxed his own death and reappeared five and a half years later after he was believed to have died in a canoeing accident. The cast includes Eddie Marsden as John Darwin, Monica Dolan as Anne Darwin, John's wife, Mark Stanley as Mark Darwin, the oldest son, and Dominic Applewhite as Anthony Darwin, the younger Darwin's son. In the actual story, Don was seen paddling out to sea in a kayak on the 21st of March 2002 at Season Keru. Later the same day, he was reported missing after failing to report for work. A large-scale sea search took place, during which 62 square kilometers of coastline was searched, and there was no sign of Darwin. Though a double-ended paddle was retrieved from the sea near Seaton Keru, and the following day. Later on the 22nd of March 2002, a wreckage of Darwin's kayak was found. The North Sea was unusually calm and rescuers were puzzled that Darwin could have gotten into trouble in such conditions. During the years that Darwin was presumed dead, he lived for some time in a bedset next door to the family home, and then he secretly moved back in with his wife Anne in February 2003. Meanwhile, a death certificate was issued stating that Darwin had died on the 21st of March 2002. This allowed his wife to claim the life insurance and alleged to be £250,000 was paid out from Unit Direct Insurance Management Limited, part of the AIG Insurance Group. Sometime that year, a tenant on the block of Bedsit Flats that Darwin owned, Lee Wardrop, recognised Darwin and asked him, Aren't you supposed to be dead? To which Darwin replied, Don't tell anyone about this. Wardrop later said that he had not told the police because he did not want to get involved. John Darwin later applied and obtained a new passport under the false name John Jones, but using his true home address. In November 2004, the couple visited Cyprus to investigate buying property there. Darwin and his wife then began to consider Panama as a possible destination. The couple flew to Panama on the 14th of July 2006, where they were photographed by a Panamanian property agent, and the resulting photograph was posted on the internet. Newspapers from February to 2007 were later found in the boarded-up gap between the Darwin's house and the bedsit, where John had hidden. In March 2007, the couple returned to Panama and formed a company called Jaguar Properties in order to buy a two-bedroom apartment in El Dorado for £50,000. The bedsit house next to the family home was sold under the name of Darwin's son, Mark. The home had been transferred to Mark in 2006. The proceeds from the sale were then transferred to Panama. The following month, Anne returned to the UK to sell her home, while Darwin remained in Panama. In May 2007, the couple purchased a £200,000 tropical estate in the village of Escambol, Colón, in Panama, near the Panama Canal, with the intention of building a hotel from where their canoeing holidays could be run. A police investigation was started in September, when a colleague of Anne became suspicious upon hearing a phone conversation between the couple. The Darwin family home was sold for £295,000 in October 2007, and Anne subsequently left for Panama. In the third week of November, the couple holidayed in Costa Rica before returning to Panama. On the 30th of November 2007, Anne bought an airline ticket for her husband to England because he was missing his sons. On the same day, Mark left his property firm after working his notice period. Following a change in Panama's visa laws, Darwin emailed Anne on the 14th of June 2007 to notify her that the identities would have to be verified by the UK police in order for them to receive now required Panamanian investors' visas. Darwin then decided to return to the UK under his real name and fake amnesia. On December 1, 2007, Darwin walked into a West End Central Police Station in London, claiming to have no memory of the past five years. His wife Anne, who had sold up their British properties and moved to Panama three months before his reappearance, expressed surprise, joy and elation at the return of her missing husband. The UK police by the time had already suspected that Darwin might not be dead, since Anne, despite portraying herself as a broken-hearted widow, took foreign holidays, planned to sell the family home in Hartlepool to move to Panama, and transferred large sums of money abroad. The police financial investigation had already begun three months prior to Darwin's reappearance, following a tip from one of Anne's colleagues connecting her claim on her husband's life insurance and her subsequent immigration to Panama. The Darwin's cover story unraveled over to the Daily Mirror, published a photo of the Darwin's taken in Panama in 2006. The photograph had been discovered when a member of the public searched the words John, Anne, and Panama in Google Images. The photo had been featured on a website, movedtopanama.com, and was brought to the attention of the Daily Mirror and the Cleveland police. Anne reportedly confirmed that the photograph was of John, saying, Yes, that's him. My sons will never forgive him. The police then arrested Darwin and at his son's house. Darwin was arrested and charged with fraud. His wife Anne, who was also arrested and charged for helping Darwin to collect the life insurance of £250,000. The fraudulent death also allowed the couple to pay off their £130,000 mortgage. 
In December 2007, after it was revealed that the couple had been photographed together in Panama a year earlier, Anne confessed to knowing Darwin was alive and he had been secretly living in the house next door, which allowed him to receive the insurance money illegally for his own personal gain. On July 23, 2008, John and Anne Darwin were each sentenced to more than six years in prison. Now the old chestnut of saying sometimes truth is stranger than fiction couldn't apply more applicably to this weird and strange story of a man literally faking his own death, going to such extremes now just to get the insurance money rather than declaring bankruptcy. And that the fact that his wife was coerced into helping him is fascinating, macabre, and yet also of course makes for some very good television. The show is very well made and it's to the point. It's only four episodes and it really sort of covers everything quite quickly. There are some details that of course they skip over, but fundamentally they cover all the main aspects of this fascinating and strange story. The cast are absolutely fantastic in this. Eddie Marsden is an excellent actor, but he really does play this sort of psychopathic John Darwin so well here as a man that just cannot seem to take responsibility for himself. But the standout star for me has to be Monica Dolan as Anne Darwin. She has a range of emotions that she has to go through. And there are times that you feel sympathy for her. There are times when she irritates you. There are times when you just feel that she brought this upon herself and she should have stood up to her husband. But at the end of the day, Monica Dolan really portrays this character as a multi-layered, complicated woman. It was a victim of her circumstances and of years of emotional and mental abuse from her husband who got her to tag along in this whole thing. Whether you view her as innocent or not, she did play a big role in it and she definitely deserved to go to prison for it. But in the same breath though, it clearly was John's idea and master plan all along. Or so the show portrays. As I said, this is a very well made show to the point and it covers the story in great depth and detail. And with its wonderful acting performances to boot, this show will leave you feeling somewhat dismayed that a man would actually try and do this and buck the system as it were by faking his own death lying to his family and bringing his wife down along with him. The thief, the wife and the canoe gets a 9 out of 10.